Good afternoon. I'm happy to be here today to talk about early childhood education and the connections to Every Student Succeeds Act because I think there are great opportunities um, in this reauthorization uh, to really strengthen the continuum of education from birth through grade three. So going back to Mr. Collins' comments about children entering kindergarten and being behind and how that never really, um, there's never really an opportunity to catch up without great intervention. I think part of the solution is how we strengthen what happens from the time a child is born uh, until school entry and beyond. And so um, this law has much potential to help in that matter. Um, so that really is the greatest opportunity we, that we have. And I want to talk about this in, in the context of a strict and continuum of education and care birth through grade three. Why is that important? Well, we know achievement gaps exist early. Mr. Collins talked about children entering school uh, far behind and how it's impossible to catch up. Uh, but we do know high quality early education helps to prepare children for school success. And the state has done a lot of work about preparing children uh, to be more ready for school. With NC Pre-K, the state funded pre-kindergarten program, uh, Smart Start, the collaboration that exists across agencies to really strengthen that continuum. But if we're going to leverage those gains, um, that are made in pre-K programs, sustained attention really needs to, to occur uh, to uh, produce high quality instruction and learning uh, across the continuum at school entry and beyond. So there's, there's a great amount of evidence that the quality of early education, the quality of the early education continuum can and should be strengthened. And if we don't strengthen that, gaps are, are fairly stable from third grade on. Uh, Carolyn mentioned that there are only 720 days between kindergarten entry and third grade to prepare a student to read. But I would suggest all of the time from birth until kindergarten entry, those first 2,000 days are as critically important in preparing children for school success. And the Read to Achieve law, I think, is an opportunity to really think about reforming the early care and education system in North Carolina. And ESA provides a vehicle for that to occur. I just wanted to point to this provision that's in the House Bill 1030, which is the state budget bill, which requires the Department of Health and Human Services in consultation with the Department of Public Instruction and other state agencies and organizations that administer support or study early childhood education uh, to collaborate on an ongoing basis to develop and implement a statewide vision for early childhood education, first through third grade. So creating that strategic vision. I think now is an opportunity to really think about how to do that in a comprehensive way. Um, in the reauthorization, there are both uh, grant opportunities and opportunities with, with the separate titles uh, that exist in the funding that the state receives. I want to talk first about two grant opportunities, preschool development grants and literacy for all results for the nation, which is um, called a LEARN grant. Preschool development grants are co-administered by the Department of Education and the Department of Health and Human Services. Uh, it's a competitive grant funding to improve coordination, quality, and access for early childhood education for low and moderate income children from birth to age five. That grant will require the state to conduct periodic statewide needs assessments of the availability and quality of existing programs in, in the state, the unduplicated number of children served, and an unduplicated number of children awaiting services in the pre-K space. Uh, it will require the state to develop a strategic plan that recommends collaboration, coordination, and quality improvements <coughs> to maximize parental choice and to share best practices among early childhood educators uh, to increase collaboration and efficiencies of services. There are preschool development grants that are currently uh, implemented on a across the nation. North Carolina is not one of the states that is currently receiving one of those grants. Uh, this is a, a keen opportunity to really think about how to coordinate across that continuum. Thank you. Um, the LEARN grant, in connection to the literacy plan that um, Carolyn just described, gives us an opportunity to um, receive funds to revise our comprehensive state literacy uh, plan and provide targeted sub-grants to early childhood education programs and local education agencies uh, and their private 
partners to implement evidence-based evidence -based programs to ensure high-quality, comprehensive literacy instruction for students most in need. So really focusing on children zero to five and how we can enhance um, the language and literacy development and school readiness of children from birth through kindergarten. As I move on, I want to talk um, a little bit more about what the opportunities are in the state plan. State Title I plans um, must describe how they will support school districts and schools that choose to use Title I funds to support early childhood programs. Uh, as you may know, Title I, uh, an acceptable use of Title I funding is to support pre-kindergarten programs in the state. And currently, about $49 million in Title I funds are being used in that manner. Our state plan will have to describe how we are supporting districts, but I think it's also an opportunity um, to talk about all districts, not just those districts that are using those funds um, to support early childhood programs, but <coughs> consistent with the legislative language in the budget bill, how we support districts in improving transitions of students from pre-K programs into school age space. There are some big opportunities that I will we'll speak to very quickly. Um, one is around improved coordination. School districts that receive Title I funding must coordinate with early childhood education programs. So this includes, for example, developing and implementing a systemic procedure for receiving records, establishing channels of communications, conducting meetings with families and other programs, organizing and participating in training related to transition to elementary school. Another big opportunity is around parent and family engagement. Uh, family engagement funds may be used for joint professional development inclusive of early learning educators. So it doesn't have to be specific to, to school LEA educators, but it can go out into the early childhood community, uh, creating that consistency and continuity across the continuum. Uh, states may support training teachers, principals, early childhood education program directors, and other <coughs> early childhood education program providers to participate in joint efforts to address transition. So transition is a con constant thing that, that's embedded in every student succeeds act. Um, improving the quality and effectiveness of the workforce. So using professional development funds um, for early learning capacity, building early education um, educators and elementary educators of uh, pedagogical knowledge. So districts can provide programs to increase the knowledge base of teachers, principals on the instruction in the early grades. So ensuring that principals overseeing early childhood programs have a keen understanding of, of child development, how to support children across that continuum, and ensuring that teachers are providing instructional practices that meet the uh, developmental needs of the children in the classroom. Providing programs designed to increase the ability of principals to support teachers, early childhood educators, to meet the needs of students through age eight. So really thinking about how we build a cohesive system of supports and structures that ensure children are uh, needs are being met in the classroom. That being said, I think the state plan gives us an opportunity to define a strategy for promoting pre-K through grade three alignment um, and supporting district and elementary school capacity building focus, uh, focused on educator effectiveness, instructional tools, learning environments, family engagement, including two-way communication and cultivating uh, shared decision-making with families and continuity across the continuum, including smooth transitions and then building strong, effective uh, leadership in that space. Uh, so it's important to think about how to inform this plan, that it shouldn't be centric to, to the Department of Public Instruction, but stakeholders need to be involved in that process. So informing the state plan uh, requires stakeholder input. Informing the local education plan requires, uh, excuse me, local education agency plan requires state input. Um, the Education Commission on the states has spoken you know, eloquently about how to drive meaningful collaboration beyond what is just um, informing or collecting information through surveys, uh, but really bringing people together to talk about um, 
whose work is this, who has the expertise to provide good information needed to make good decisions, who has the credibility to bring stakeholders together and how the stakeholders work together. Uh, to inform the early learning portion of this plan, I've been working with the North Carolina Early Childhood Foundation and we'll be convening a group of stakeholders uh, September 19th at the SAS Institute, uh, both from the public school system and the early childhood community to really talk about what are strategic priorities that should be lifted up and included in this plan. Those will then be uh, recommended to the state board for your advice and consent. So, thank you. Questions? Comments, questions, or comments? Thank you for your work on this and uh, we appreciate this update. Thank you. Appreciate it as well. So, uh, looking at the hour of